Uh, my name is Tom Bandevin. I am one of the new pain docs who works at the VA and at Duke. And um, thanks for uh, listening to me today. My, our group for the past three years or so has been working on a project that we have called VIPER, which is called the Veterans Integrated Pain Evaluation Research Project. And we, we've done this in collaboration with Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. And with them, we've recruited about 130 soldiers who have had amputation on the battlefield. And the goal of this project is to understand why about half of these soldiers develop chronic pain, sometimes lifelong disabling chronic pain after amputation, and why half of them don't. And the military is very interested in this question, as are we. And it also applies to hundreds of thousands of other patients who we take care of in the perioperative period every year. So anytime you injure a nerve in a surgical procedure, there's a, a large percentage chance that, that that patient will develop chronic pain. And in amputation, that percentage is 50 to 80 percent. In other surgeries, it's more like 20 to 30 percent. But we're, we're talking about millions of patients every year. So we're creating chronic pain in hundreds of thousands of patients every year who undergo thoracotomy, hernia repair, um, mastectomy, for example. So this is a large problem that's been under-recognized and one that we're focused on with this project. So our goal is, is to classify different types of pain, predict who will get pain and who will get different types of pain, try to prevent the pain, and if we can't prevent it, then treat it in a, in a non-opioid fashion, in, in some novel way. So our strategy for Viper is to collect blood samples and phenotypic data from about 130 soldiers, and we finished actually enrolling those soldiers. And we split them into two groups, uh, soldiers with little or no pain and soldiers with significant or severe pain. And we want to know why there's this difference between these two groups. These are all young men and women, all without much medical comorbidity. They all have basically the same nerve injury, but they develop very dichotomous pain outcomes. So to study that, we are looking at um, almost all the molecules that we can find in their blood, and we're doing very large-scale, unbiased analyses of their blood, including gene expression, DNA methylation analyses, um, sequencing their entire exome. We're doing unbiased uh, global proteomics and we're also doing unbiased metabolomics. And metabolomics is what I'll talk about today. In addition, at the, at the same time, we're performing a similar amputation model in mice. So in mice, we are taking their sciatic nerve and cutting two of the branches of, of the sciatic nerve, leaving one branch and in the distribution of that branch, the mice get very sensitive. They have pain in that distribution. And we feel that this matches the amputation pain in, in humans pretty well. And we're performing the same type of metabolomics experiments in the mice. And what we end up with is a list of metabolites that are significantly different in humans with pain compared to humans without pain, and in mice with pain and mice without pain. And when we compared these lists of metabolites, we found about 12, this isn't the entire list, but we found about 12 metabolites that were the same between humans and mice, which was very exciting. And of those 12, three were bile acids. Now, um, when I learned about bile acids, I learned that they are responsible for dissolving fat in the gut, allowing us to absorb fat. They're basically soaps. But it turns out that bile acids are more than just soap. They're also signaling molecules that do many different things in the body including glucose homeostasis, immune modulation, ion channel modulation, and perhaps have a, a role in pain. We believe that this, a lot of the chronic pain that's developing is due to inappropriate resolution of inflammation. So the fact that bile acids are important in immune modulation made us interested in bile acids. Um, at the same time, a paper came out in the Journal of Clinical Investigation just almost on the day that we started to look at, the, at these substances, showing that bile acids in mice and rats were analgesic or, or um, treated pain. So the first thing we wanted to do, just to see if this is a path we should follow at all, was to reproduce the results from that um, Journal of Clinical Investigation paper. And in this figure, we, we've done that. 
Um, basically, this figure shows how sensitive mice are when you press on their paw with a filament. And in black are mice treated with deoxycholate, which is a bile acid, and on the right, in gray, are mice treated with saline. And in the mice treated with deoxycholate, their sensitivity went down. So the, the number of times their paw withdrew from a filament went down significantly when they, when they received this bile acid. So now we have a group of substances that showed up between species in our metabolomics project, meaning that it's evolutionarily conserved, which tells us that it must be important in some way. Shown to be analgesic or prevent pain in a, in a model that's already been published. And um, continues to show up in a lot of our other analyses, which I won't talk about today. But we're, we're very interested in this pathway. And um, this led us to the, the, the grant that we submitted. And the aims of the grant are basically to determine whether modifying this pathway can treat or prevent acute pain, the kind of pain you get if you get a cut or an incision or an inflamed area, and whether it can treat or prevent chronic pain, the chronic neuropathic pain that people have for months or years, um, the kind of pain that's disabling. And I, I think when we um, use the, the funding that we've gotten um, to answer those two questions and to uh, determine whether this, this pathway is important in acute pain and chronic pain, that will give us really good data and a, um, a really strong story to go for follow-up funding. Because what we really want to know is not necessarily whether giving patients bile acids is, is important, because we don't necessarily want to give patients bile acids themselves. But we want to know why the pathway is important, and that, that's what our follow-up funding will hopefully help us determine. Um, that's really all I had today, but I, do, I did just want to quickly show you some of the recent data we've gotten just between when we submitted the grant and now. Um, we've been working really hard on this project, and we've already um, put deoxycholate or one of the bile acids into an acute pain model, which is the first part of our first specific aim. And this is only a small number of mice. But basically what we do is we inject hot pepper capsaicin into the paws of mice. And then they have a particular behavior that they do when you do that. They lick and they bite at their paw. Um, when we give only saline with capsaicin, they lick and bite for about 80 seconds. When we give bile acid, they do it for about 40 seconds. So it's about a 50% reduction in this behavior um, in an acute pain model. This is just a small number of mice, but it, it's very encouraging for the future. So, um, we know that we know that pain is a is a very important problem that's been under addressed. Any anyone who's gone to the doctor for chronic pain knows that our treatment modalities are very limited, and it's the goal of this project to to try to prevent chronic pain after surgery and amputation. And, and to treat it. So um, uh, I'd like to thank, first of all, my mentor, Andy Shaw, who's been leading the Viper Project for about three years. Um, also my graduate student, Alex Chamasian, who's been doing a lot of this work and uh, has been a wonderful addition to the lab, and to um, the donors and members of the, uh, of the committee, thank you for your support. Thank you.